All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to lesson 100. Today we are talking about simplifying decimal numbers now. So let's see what we have going on here. So it says here that decimal numbers can be equivalent also. Remember that word equivalent means equal. So you can also simplify decimal numbers. Here we have 50 hundredths. Here we only have five tenths, but if you look, they are the same equivalent equal piece, right? So what are we going to do about simplifying decimal numbers? So we got basically two rules right now. One, take off any zeros off the front of any whole numbers. That's left of the decimal point. Here we have 3 and 2 tenths. You don't want to write it 0, 3 and 2 tenths. And we've talked about starting whole numbers with zeros already, right? And the second rule, take off any zeros off the end of any decimal numbers. Only at the end. If here we had 3 and 200 thousandths, that's really equivalent to 3 and 2 tenths. Or 1 and 10,000 hundred thousandths, that could be simplified down to just one tenth. And the last little reminder, you want to leave one zero in the ones place if you don't have a whole number. But do not take any zeros off the end of whole numbers. It seems like I go through this lesson with fifth graders sometimes. And all of a sudden, they want to tell me that 500 is equal to 5. And they're saying, Mr. Hines, you said we could take zeros off the end. Only take zeros off the end of decimal numbers, not off of whole numbers. So we're going to see a lot of stuff like this. Simplify each decimal number. So our rules, take any zeros off the front of any whole numbers. I don't have any zeros at the front of my whole number. So rule number two, take any zeros off the back of any decimal numbers. So this is just 32 and zero hundredths, right? So I don't need that zero. I don't need that zero. And then it says remove the decimal point if you don't have any decimal numbers after it, because nothing is the same as zero. So I don't want to say 32 and nothing. I just want to say 32. Okay, here we go. 5,810 thousandths. Take off any zeros off the front of any whole numbers. Well, I actually don't have a whole number here. I just have one zero in the ones place. And when we're writing decimal numbers, if we don't have a whole number, we do want to include this zero. So now we have take any zeros off the back of any decimal numbers. So I don't need that zero at the end, and I don't need that zero at the end. So that's just leaving us with 58 hundredths. We're not going to say zero and 58 hundredths. Just don't say anything here. 58 hundredths. Let's try it again. Here it says, take off any zeros off the front of any whole numbers. Here I have the whole number three, so I don't need to start it with a zero. And take any zeros off the back of any decimal numbers. So instead of three and 20 thousandths, I can simplify it down to three and two hundredths. One more like this. Here we have 690 and 20 thousandths. Take off any zeros off the front of any whole numbers. So I'm not going to need that zero right there. Take off any zeros off the back of any decimal numbers. I'm not going to need that zero right there. I do need this zero though. I don't want to delete him. He was in the middle of digits. And if I take away that zero, it's going to change the value of the number. 690 and 200. So here it says, 
attach a zero to the end of five without changing the value of the number. Now, if I just went and put in a zero here, that's actually going to change my value, isn't it? Because five is going to become 50. How am I going to do this without changing the value? Put in a decimal point. Five and zero tenths would be the same thing as five, right? Here it says, write a decimal equivalent to five and nine tenths with three decimal places. Well, right now, I have one decimal place, right? And they want us to write it with three decimal places. So here I have a bunch of nothing. So what type of digits can I put in there? That would be zeros because zero is the same as nothing. Five and nine hundred thousandths is equivalent to five and nine tenths. Here we have one that says Nick added three and seventy five hundredths to two and seventy five hundredths, and he found the sum to be six and fifty hundredths. Now we have to go and simplify the sum from here on out. Any decimal answer you write down, if the decimal can be simplified, it must be simplified. So, what's the rule? Take off the zero at the end of any decimal number instead of six and fifty hundredths, six and five tenths is that decimal written in its lowest terms. And that, my friends, is the end. You might want a scratch piece of paper for the Socratic quiz today. And good luck.